This is Learn to Do with Peter for April 3rd, 2024. And today we're probably going to talk about Jack of uh, maybe some mid journey character reference stuff. And hopefully we'll generate lots of images with, um, uh, with Jankified prompts. So, um, anybody got any questions, concerns, thoughts before we get started? Uh, I will dive into it. Um, it's kind of funny. Um, I wanted to talk about character reference a little bit. And so I put that on the, oh, we've got some new people who've joined. Let me share the uh, Hack of D link again. So this is a notes page and you can either look at it or not during the call. Oops. Um, and it'll be up on my screen too. So I put in this uh, kind of topic thing that we might do mid-journey character reference, uh, largely because of Joy. Joy's got a claymation character that she's had problems with. And so um, it's been like two calls now that we've missed, missed her, um, I think. So I wanted to make sure we hit that, but unfortunately this time doesn't work for Joy. So Joy is not actually here. However, I have at least a two character things to kind of show real quick, and then we can talk about whether or not um, somebody else wants to do show and tell with their characters, um, or has, has any questions about the, the ones that I've got to show. So let me show you mine first real quick. Um, let me make a new section on this too, just for... And I know um, I know not everybody's got mid journey, uh, and this isn't super relevant if you don't. But I I don't know. It's actually probably good to to think through character references because as the tools evolve and start adding the ability to do character reference or whatever, um, knowing knowing how to think about it a little bit is probably a good thing. Even if the tools are a little bit different, you get a little bit of a framework for what to think about. Um, what to give in feedback about what the features you want about character reference and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, so uh, let me go to mid journey. Uh, really, and I'm also, uh, if the web interface is like, if doing this in the web interface confuses anybody and I need to explain it, explain stuff in Discord, I can still do that. I've switched over to the, the web interface. It's, um, it's nice, it works really well. Um, there's a couple of like, things I can do super fast in here that would be slower in Discord. So I'm all the, all the way in on, on the web. Um, uh, and something that I found really interesting, I do stuff both in the archive and create tabs. Um, archive is what they used to call my images. Um, and there's a fair amount of stuff that you can do to create an image. You've still got the imagine bar up here and, and you can do things like use a style or a prompt from one of the images in your archive. So I, I end up using all of that a lot. So let's go into my archive. Um, I can show a thing that I never used before. I've got two folders here called Josh and Serafina. Um, uh, and I like the folders. There's not a lot of room for folders. Like there's not a lot of screen real estate devoted to the folder aspect. So I don't think you could handle a lot of folders, but it, it helps you organize at least a little bit. So I'm gonna click on Serafina and tell her story a little bit. Um, the story of her is that I started off with um, this one. Uh, from early days. I think this is a random prompt and I don't think I want to share the prompt. Um, but I'm like, oh, wow, that's really cool. I think she'd be a good character. One of the things I've learned about characters is that by the time I've, I've got like 80 images of them, I'm pretty sick and tired of their face. <laughs> so it's the weirdest thing, you know, I, this is, I, it turns out I like, um, uh, I like her expression and the background, the sci-fi background and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, so these first ones were actually just variations, um, 
but then we finally started to get to do characters, I think. Let me keep going here. So using that very first one as a character reference, you can see it here. Um, I started just doing random, random scenarios, lunch in a futuristic space station. Um, she's working at the computer. I'm still getting good at character references. And so that first one is a little bit of an experiment, actually. What if you don't put a person in it? Um, and I can, you can kind of see that if you don't say, uh, you know, a, a woman in a, in a restaurant, it does weird things, I think. Um, so I feel like you kind of want to say, uh, you want to refer to a person. I, I still like referring to a person in, in kind of third person mode like this. And that seems to work okay. Um, fixing space plumbing, lounging on the sofa, reading a book. Character reference sheet is a classic. Um, it's kind of interesting giving it a character reference and then asking for a character reference sheet because then it does interesting things uh, because a character reference sheet is a lot of times it's for a cartoon or something like that. So um, you get a, her face to look a little bit different, which I, I was a little bit surprised by. Um, so one of the things I was doing here was trying to get, um, uh, I was trying to get like that the first expression she's got is actually not very head on. Um, so you can't really tell what her face is supposed to look like. So a lot of the first things I was doing with these was trying to get her to look forward um, and get a better face shot and then use that as a character reference. Um, and uh, that's that's especially why I went for a character reference sheet. But then I forgot kind of that a character reference sheet has a whole melange of you know different views and stuff. A lot of them not the face. So then I went to portraits, um, and instead of just professional portrait, it was my, was my first shot, which wasn't very rewarding. I tried to get a lot fancier. Asked ChatGPT, hey, write me a kind of a neutral, you know. Uh, portrait description. Um, I don't think it got a lot better. Uh, it got kind of good. So then these are too close, I think, to get her face to look good because her face gets uh, too wide angle. Um, so then I tried to pull back a little bit and these are starting to look pretty good. Um, but then they start getting a little bit too photographic, I think. So I don't know what to think about that. Um, one of the things I used to do all the time with five Midjourney 5.2 was you'd specify, I want a photo, I want a, um, you know, a graphic illustration, I want a painting, I want a whatever. I very rarely do that with six because it often picks something that, that looks great, you know, whether it's a photo um, or some kind of illustration, I, I'm always happy with it kind of. So it's not very often that I'll, I'll do, I'll ask it for a particular style, particular um, uh, medium which kind of goes good and bad here. Um, you know, I got a mi mix of stuff, which maybe I, maybe I wanted a photo, maybe I didn't, maybe I wanted an illustration, maybe I didn't, I don't know. Um, the other thing that I kind of did uh, playing around with these, I was doing it a lot of times in spare time. And so I would make little mistakes, uh, like instead of, I don't know if I have any good examples here. This has been a few days now before I really, I wonder what these are like. To keep trying to get farther away from, from her so her face doesn't get too distorted, but I don't know that it's been successful. Anyway, this one is really fascinating to me. I don't like, uh, I'm, I'm a bit of a lighting geek. I know a little bit of, about photography and the ring lights that people use uh, to do videos and stuff. It's actually a mistake. Um, you're supposed to use a ring light to evenly light up a subject, but if the subject has uh, very reflective things like eyes, um, you see the ring and then that blows the whole thing. But it's turned into a thing now, people on TikTok or whatever, they buy a ring light because they think it's the fanciest piece of equipment they can find. And then they make these, this stupid mistake and their eyes look dumb. So I thought it was really fascinating to see, uh, see Midjourney replicate that. Um, this is a nice candid shot for a photograph. I like the lighting, even though it's that's a nice lighting balance. So um, a couple a couple lessons that I've got. Um, pick somebody who you actually like their face. 
um surfing is fine as as faces go but um i don't know uh another thing is um but i'm not very entranced with her so it, and then after a while it's like i don't want to see her anymore um another thing is i always forget uh, cw uh character weight um and if if you forget CW or CW is a number between zero and 100 and 100 is the default and 100 also means I want her expression, I want her hair, I even want her outfit, I want everything the same. So if you, if you decrease that a lot, um, I, if I remember I use CW 10 and I haven't played around whether zero or 10 or 20 is the right thing, but then it can loosen up and give you, I, I think almost all of these are, are CW 100. So here's where I finally rem remembered, oh, right, I'm supposed to use CW10 so she can wear different stuff um, and maybe have different hair. I don't think she does. Um, so use CW, pick a character that you're not going to hate after a while. <laughs> I don't hate her. Um, but I, it, it took me a while to realize that the thing I liked about that initial thing, a lot of it was just the style, um, the style of the illustration and her expression. Um, the other thing I've really learned is, and this is a bad example of it because she doesn't have a, a face, uh, you know, a face forward kind of expression here. And so I'm asking it to do, to, to imagine what she would look like if she turned her face towards you. Um, I think it did a pretty good job, but my, every time I do character reference with mid journey, it, there's the, the, the original face and then there's the face that gets replicated a lot and the good thing about it is it replicates really well it continues to give you the same face but I think it's always a little bit different than the original so I'm still working on getting that you know getting that and and I, I was trying to do it here the, the whole reason I started working with this one was because I'm like I know it I'm gonna try it a, I mean I mean I'm gonna stress it a little bit by having this off angle of face but then it should be super easy to get a nice like clean front facing face and I don't, I don't know if i ever did danielle can i ask peter can i ask you oh sorry i didn't see daniel had her hand raised sorry about that no worries hey, danielle. yeah um so i don't use mid journey but i mean so i don't know about what the guardrails are like with it but um does it um prevent you well like <laughs> is it gonna like accidentally like show pornographic type of images on it i'm just i don't i don't know i don't i, I honestly i'm this is just an honest question because i've never used mid journey i'm just um, i'm just asking uh the, just, it's just yes or no just yes no, or, just give me a, a yes well or no. <laughs> I, I i've actually got some interesting information about that let me let me go into that a little bit okay. um uh and and kind of the the pro tip, well maybe a different. So the the top line answer is it's actually gotten pretty chaste. Um, it tries pretty hard not to make um, make anything pornographic. Um, and I used to see more stuff in Explore where there was like, yeah, I don't know if I want to see that in Explore, and now I don't at all. And there's there's a double thing there where. Explore also filters out whatever, you know, so it's not only what's getting generated, but it's then it's getting what's getting boosted by whatever the Explore algorithm is. Um, uh, I have to say, I ran into a totally random thing, uh, like just this week, where I had a woman's face, and it was actually just a close up of her face. And I started zooming out, and she started turning topless, and I'm like, <laughs> what the heck, <laughs> dude? Um, so I don't know. Um, uh, the, the other thing is, yeah, that's probably enough. Uh, if you're interested, go hit explore and like wander around and find what you can find. I, it's, it's gotten a lot, it's a lot cleaner nowadays. Um, Cindy. Hey y'all. Um, so I was wondering, Peter, if you could do just a sort of so I have a seed image as I know to call it and could you take an image and just begin at the beginning of mid journey of how you start if that's not too remedial for everybody if you could just I mean I use mid journey but 
you're using it in a way that I'm not able to figure out yet. How do I start with the image? And then what do I say exactly the prompt to get it to do different versions? Does that make um, sense? Yeah, let's, let's do that real quick. Um, let me do Josh show and tell real quick first, a little bit quick. Um, and then also let's hit RJ. It's always when somebody calls on you that you're muted. Um, Are you asking me to go first? Uh, yeah, you've got your hand okay, up. Okay, thanks. And... Yeah, because I, I was trying to ask a question about something you were talking about earlier, but I yeah. didn't see Daniel had her hand raised. He snuck in quicker yeah, no than worries. I did. So what I was going to ask, you were saying that you were having challenges getting it to look the way that you, in the direction you wanted to look. And what I was going to ask was, does Midjourney allow the capability to, uh, for you to provide a reference image that is posed in a certain way, and then you can yeah, tell Midjourney, hey, I, yeah, I want you to make a pose using my prompt, but use this reference image that I just uploaded with a certain intensity strength of influence to make the image look um, posed the way it is or laid out the way it is. Because I've been playing with that with Dream AI and I really like having that control. It saves so much time in writing prompts because you don't have to write the prompt anymore uh, to a great extent. You just provide it the pose image and it'll go ahead and you know take your simple prompt and Put it in that pose. I really like that. It, I, I don't think they do pose references yet. The thing that you can do is uh, start with a start with the face basically, and then make images from it. Um, and I have to say, I, I, uh, um, let me switch to create. Uh, I, I've been doing character stuff in my spare time, kind of. I haven't like really thought about it much. Um, so I didn't even do something like saying looking straight ahead or anything like that. I didn't tell it much. Um, I was just giving it different scenarios and hoping I would come up with a, uh, which is kind of the way I use mid journey. So, uh, so this one, this one actually is, she's looking forward. I don't know, this is the way the face I thought Serafina looked like is. So this might be a slightly different person. Um, but this, you know, this should be a good one to work from. And then these are, uh, so I use that, that one as a character reference. And I said, woman riding horse on a sunny day. Um, uh, half of these, she's faced backwards on the horse. Um, I, you know, another thing is I always drive around with chaos, a lot of chaos. <laughs> chaos is uh, how different the images are from what, what I should expect from it. Um, so a lot of times I'll be doing stuff and I, to do the, the proper experiment, well, let me just do it here real quick. If I can reuse this prompt, um, I can set the chaos to zero and then I've got it, then I'm at least giving it a fair chance of creating what I asked for instead of something. I, I actually have a lot of time. I have more fun when it's generating the wrong thing anyway. So I leave it generating <laughs> the wrong thing. Um, uh, it's a great, great idea. A good suggestion, RJ. I didn't actually spend that much time getting the right, the right, asking for the right pose even. And then if you upload a, an image, I think on the way, the way you do it in mid journey is you upload an image and do a blend with it. A lot of times if you upload somebody with the right pose and you've got a face or something like that, and you do a blend, uh, one out of a, you know one out of four or something like that. You'll, that face will end up with that pose. So I could have done that and I didn't. Um, so this is chaos zero. She's going to be riding a horse better, and at least she's sitting forward, even though she's looking backward. This one she's backwards. This one was okay. Pretty good. Thank you. Um, let me let me show and tell Josh real quick too. Uh, Josh is, I don't know. So, so a, a thing to know is that I'm playing with character reference. I'm still not trying to get it 
I'm still not true, trying to be really good at it. And I have more fun when it screws up anyway. So, so this is Josh. Um, uh, this was a random prompt and, um, uh, and he looks fine, you know, it's whatever. So, uh, he was out of the sea of generated images. He was, he had a face, uh, he looks like kind of an interesting person, kind of a boring person. So I'm like, okay, let's do the character reference with him. So I forget, uh, this is after I did Serafina. So I had some pretty good, like, uh, photography kind of prompts already. Um, and uh, you'll notice that I completely forgot. I was probably doing this on the phone, like on the dog walk or something like this. So I totally forgot CW, uh, character character weight. So poor guy has to wear the same suit-ish and it has the same expression and all that kind of stuff. Um, zooming in and out a little bit, this is working pretty well. This was one where I made a complete mistake. Uh, so this has got Serafina as a character reference and Josh as a character reference. So I'm like, okay, I'm actually surprised how good these came out, even though I do not like looking at these. <laughs> um, uh, so then I'm like, I forgot, you know, let's, let's get Serafina out of the picture and got some more things. I don't know what this one is. This one, I, I started doing a thing where it's like, let's do this, the style from the original picture and the character reference. And I don't know why that comes out at all, but whatever. Um, some of these actually look pretty good. This is me asking for a character reference sheet, but I'm pushing a little bit hard. I, I'm saying use the style from the original too. So this doesn't look like a super great character reference sheet. Um, these are without the style. So these look more like a character reference sheet. These are like, actually some of these are pretty usable for something. I don't know exactly what, but um, they're pretty usable. Uh, and then, I, what the heck, Midjourney? These are like, these do not have Seraphina mixed into them. They are totally straight. Um, I, there's, there's a few like hints in here, maintain an eye level perspective and a gentle expression. This, this came straight out of ChatGPT. And I was just asking for, make him, you know, make, tell the photographer to take something neutral. And, this seems really neutral to me and like he's all dolled up i don't know man it's weird and then i'm like no nah, that couldn't have been that couldn't have been real and then they got even worse <laughs> so i don't know what's up with that and i actually kind of these these have seraphina's red hair even and there's nothing seraphina ish in here and so i don't know there's some kind of cross bleed or something like that um uh he when he fixes space plumbing he fixes space space plumbing differently than Serafina. Um, he's not very good at reading a book either. Um, uh, I have the the chaos turned up way too high, so his arm gets bent out of shape, and he does weird stuff, which is great. So some of these, I, none of these are attractive to me, but this kind of oddness is something I would like. So whatever. Um, and then this is probably it's a lot of those I should have been doing the low CW and I finally remembered do a low CW and I got some nice ones out of these actually. Um, I don't know why. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know. I think that's a woman version of um, of Josh. And I don't know, man. This one. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So uh, Character reference, super fun to play with. Um, you get some good images. You have to try pretty hard. And I'm still kind of, a lot of these don't look like the original Josh. They look like, they, they all look together and a little bit different from original Josh. And original Josh has a very straight, um, you know, he's he's got a much better character reference pose than the original Serafina. Danielle. Okay, so do you think that, did it have this problem or not, I don't know if you consider it a problem. Did it do this as much when it was on Discord? Um, this type of mixing. This, this type of stuff? Well, how no, it's, it's mixing the question. other. Because like I said, I, I haven't, I don't use Midjourney, but I, it's making think... me think that it's, it's like taking like your past history of stuff that you used. You know, 
you know what I mean? That's a, that's a really good question. I didn't even think about it. And it wasn't until I was describing to somebody else that it's like, I don't even know why Josh would have red hair. Like, it's like I, it's using the, past history of what you've done to, I don't know. Anyway, that's all. I, I, I think they do. And uh, version six, I think they still call alpha. They're about ready to flip it over to beta. But version six itself is kind of like an experiment. And you're supposed to like tolerate that kind of stuff. I know that they, they fiddle with it live. And I also know a thing that um, I don't I know I, I think this wouldn't be the feature. They're going to come out of, with a feature which kind of scares me, where uh, if you go in and rate a bunch of images and give it an idea which image you like, which kinds of images you like, they're going to personalize your um, your generations to look like what you liked in general, right? So I kind of wonder maybe it's something you know there was something like. I didn't rate any of these, so but um, it might be some kind of crosstalk because of that feature coming up. Um, Paul, I've noticed the same phenomenon when I'm prompting something with Mid Journey for a while, and then I drop the cross the crosstalk, or yeah, and then I stop a certain aspect, and it sometimes it likes to hang on to that like a latent memory or something. I've noticed that too. That's so, a really good feedback. Know. I don't know what that on is. the on the web or on Discord. I'm using the web. Um, so is it is it only on the web? I'm sorry to interrupt, but is it on the web or only on the web is this happening, or is it was it happening on Discord too? No, I don't remember it happening on Discord, but um, I have noticed it happening on the web. So maybe there is a connection there. Um, uh, I'm not in. I'm not interested enough to to go back and experiment with a Discord. I, I actually love the Discord interface, but um, I go faster on some of the fun stuff in the web. So um, my guess is is it wouldn't be the web or Discord, but it might be experiments they're, they're doing. I, I would guess that it would do both, but it could actually just be one. Um, Cindy, how about if we get back to you? Uh, let's. So that's character reference, folks. Um, have fun with it. It's lots of fun. The uh, um, I just realized part of what's happening with me is I can't use the dot com because I haven't made a thousand images. Uh, that's not suck. Plot. That's um, that's what's going on. So I don't. It's let's use Discord. Let's let's kind of start from the beginning and do like five minutes of you know getting started with Mid Journey. So I I have to say the um. It's, it's, it's something that is super weird. I used to go to, from Discord once in a while, I would go to the web and you'd see the same images. Um, this is from like a week ago, more than a week ago. So it's weird going back and not seeing all your images in, the, in both interfaces, which I was used to when I was mostly using Discord. Anyway, um, I, I use Midjourney to do a lot of creative stuff and I don't care too much what it looks like as much as I care that it's like super cool. <laughs> so it's a whole different experience when you're wanting to get mid journey to do something you want, I have to say. But uh, Cindy, let's let's start like from scratch with mid journey and make some images, either creatively or the ones that ones that we want. I'm super excited about these, by the way. I, this is from Shadows Wriggle and Twist, I think. I'm still playing with it. I just found these this, today. So I'll share, Peter, the, um, the thing I'm actually trying to make happen is a line drawing pencil sketch of a character that <clears throat> would just be a, you know, black and white or gray, whatever, pencil of the character and then once the character is there and it's pretty sketchy right it's like children's book sketchy and then that character can develop into all these different antics um that's my dream peter that's a good <laughs> dream the the way i would the way i would so the one I would, I it, it sounds like you didn't really, you don't have to have the character look like a specific thing probably. You, I mean, generally you want it to be a person or a dog or, or a cat or whatever. Right, but I want this, it could be a mushroom. 
Um, yeah. Uh, I have, so a couple of tricks and tips, which are going to sound obvious, maybe, but maybe, maybe people haven't thought of them this way. Um, it's always a hard slog. I don't know. Let's, let's actually, let's do it for real. Um, so one way I would do that, let's, let's do it a couple different ways, I guess. Um, and I can show off a couple that that would be the way I would do it. Um, but let's do the first thing. Um, I typically go to uh, ChatGPT or your LLM of choice. It doesn't matter too much. Um, and ask it for, so this is photographic descriptions of a man. Th these were actually things I used. These are the prompts actually I used uh, for Josh uh, to generate Josh's. Um, so I would, because, because asking, um, uh, let's do, my, let's do Discord. My fingers find the web version now <laughs> without even me thinking about it. Um, uh, so line drawing of a cute mushroom or something like that. Is this pretty close, Cindy? So that's kind of like, um, that's, I can't even spell imagine anymore, huh? I guess what it is, I, yeah. Uh, um, and I've got my chaos set way high. So is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Let's do the, the same thing. Um, let's set this up to fast as well. Uh, let's do the same thing. Uh, I'm going to leave my suffix uh, at 45, chaos 45, and then uh, override that so I get a more straight thing. And we'll see which one is better, gives us better stuff. Um, really quick, I would I would go over to ChatGPT and say. Um, Line drawing of a cute mushroom. Uh, uh, it's it's pretty cool. Um, probably, I well, hopefully everybody does this with ChatGPT or their favorite LLM nowadays. Um, when you're trying to do something, anything, and you need some ideas, it's really helpful to go over to your LLM and say, let's, let's talk about this. Let's think about it. Um, RJ? Well, I was sort of wondering this route that you're taking. I'm not familiar with MidJourney, but it seems like a very circuitous route. If I were in another AI image generator, I would just jump immediately to the style that's already pre-configured on that image tool to do that kind of drawing. So like in Dream AI, yeah. I would jump to a, a, I would pick a style that's line drawing, you know, just all the things that Cindy said and bang, it would already be trained to do that exact thing, say, uh, thing that yeah. I want. So I wouldn't have to do it. So I'm trying to understand is mid journey, you have to start from scratch basically, or there's no predefined styles um there's there's a way to ask for the same style and you can build up a style library but that's i i, I don't think people really do that in mid journey I, there is a cheat that i would do um i i think mostly mid journey people would just do it over and and i'll show some some shortcuts but yeah i would start over um uh, so uh, along with RJ's suggestion of maybe you want to start with a different tool that has like line drawing as one of the style selections, um, there's a bunch of GPTs that would do that kind of thing too, right? I'm sure there's like a, like thousands or tens of thousands of line drawing GPTs um, or uh, uh, adult coloring, you know, pages, uh, you know, and then you 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 pick the the one of those GPTs and you say mushroom, and then you would get a line drawing of a mushroom. That would be another quick start. Um, uh, 
so let me uh, let me go back to ChatGPT here. Um, instead of a line drawing of the cute mushroom, um, you know, do I want to think about expressions? Uh, do I want to think about textures? Do I think about want to uh, think about line weights? So uh, this is a technique for for LLMs where you get it to think a little bit, and then you say, um, uh, now write a prompt. I, sometimes I say a visual description. Sometimes I say, I'm going to say a prompt for Dolly actually here. Draws a mushroom uh, with a cute expression. Heavy line weight. Um, Typically, since I'm I'm actually going over to Mid Journey, I would say don't create an image. But I think if I, I, I I'm okay if it creates an image, because I know how to get the the prompt out of the image on Dolly. Um, I didn't do a great job at this, but the when you're playing this game, the the thing is, I I might have had a few more turns of the conversation about what I wanted the mushroom to look like, what, you know, what kind of expression. I would brainstorm more with ChatGPT. Um, so these are these are pretty good. Um, and then the thing in ChatGPT is it took this, you know, it took this conversation actually. And then as it made these, um, it this is the actual uh, thing that went off to um, oops, I didn't want to download it really. Uh, this is the actual prompt. So giving this to uh, Midjourney, whether or not I asked it, I could have said, don't even create a prompt and it would have printed something like this. Um, bringing this over to Midjourney and uh, using that is gonna give me something probably better. Um, let's let that percolate for a little bit. And even if you haven't done a thousand images, um, you should be able to log in to the .com site and do the explore. So when you go to midjourney.com, so this is an uh, incognito browser. Um, it does the login thing. It'll let you sign in and I think I wonder if you have to be at the right tier or something like that. But even before I was using the alpha version of the web UI, you could sign into the web and then um, uh, look at um, Explorer. So um, so this is a, so 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 we went through a couple things. Just start with a super basic prompt and try it. Um, start with a more complicated prompt from ChatGPT and try that. Um, uh, those are both kind of the long way. And a thing that I would do is go to Explorer and you can search the prompts in Explorer. Either, just an FYI, when someone like me touches Explorer, um, it gives me an alert that says, coming soon this is an alpha and it's being tested and only the advanced users have more who have more than <laughs> 1000 images can use this we'll make an announcement when it's available to everyone so that's um, what pops up the second i touch Explore. okay thanks that's thanks right. for the uh thanks for the info cindy and i apologize um the fix for that of course is to generate a thousand images i'm no I'm, this weekend I'm you can get your ass things. this is what i'm gonna do yeah. Hey, Cindy, just a, just as a side note, um, ever since the beginning when I worked with Midjourney, I've always been able to use Explorer. So, I didn't pay for Midjourney, so I don't know why. Yeah, I don't, it's just so I don't know if it has to wait till you have a thousand or not. So, it, it, but, uh, it, um, you might be trying, Cindy, you might be trying alpha.midjourney. Um, Try just mid journey without the alpha. Um, so 
if you're lucky enough to have the web version and you get ex access to explore, you can poke around with, um, with keywords or prompt words, I guess. So you saw a line didn't work for me. Um, line drawing with in quotes worked pretty well. And then I could play with, um, actually, if I search for mushroom, there's going to be a bunch. Um, uh, so some of these might be close to where you want to go, Cindy, I don't know. Um, and and yeah, maybe it's more, I have I just it was an example, but it's more once you have the image. What do you do, do you, then? Well, yeah, it's I mean, you know, I can make all the images and I have lots of seed images that I'm ready to go with. It's more when you're not in the dot com, how in the discord can you get it to do repeat like you've done? Um. Uh, okay, thanks for sharpening up that that question, and let's explore let's explore style actually in a, in a bit. Um, let's finish this off a little. Um, spelunking around um, explore is uh, is super valuable, um, and the reason to do it is because when you say line drawing, you might get all kinds of things, right? And it's like, well, I don't want that kind. I don't want this kind. But maybe this one is the one, the one I want, or maybe this one or whatever. So you pick one of these, and you get to see the prompt here. So this one is line art icon. Um, so that's a good thing to know. Um, and then the next step in this is, I don't think, you know, I used you you can actually do some of this kind of stuff even in Discord because you can go to one of the um, one of the generator channels uh, and use Discord search. Um, and you're searching fewer images, I think, but um, but there's still a lot of images in here. Uh, so you can go find these even in Discord. Um, you might get lucky and find somebody who's stuck on line art tarot cards of <laughs> skeletons. Um, but here's some like decent ones. So the thing that you're looking for is what words did they use? You know, how did, how did this come out differently from this? Um, so this has got, this person's super excited, but they've got, um, cute giraffes, cartoon style, simple line drawing, vector graphics. So they like really stuffed stuff into here and maybe that's what got them this, maybe not. Um, this looks like uh, this is a very minimal font, a minimal prompt, and this is great, you know. Um, so basically, like scroll through and find the the images that that are the ones you're looking for. Um, look at the prompts uh, on the web. If you get to a particular image, you can also search for other similar images, um, and its its idea of similar is a mix of how it, how it visually looks, what the inspirations were. There's a bunch of different things, but you can keep dry, drilling down into, um, you know, getting closer and closer to uh, what you were thinking of. Um, that, and you can keep doing that. You know, you keep you you get you can kind of zero in towards something that you like and see all the all the prompt there. Um, in the web, you can actually use these prompts. I don't do that usually, where you can use the style or the image. Um, but you can also copy the prompt here and paste it someplace. So a lot of times, I guess I've done this a fair bit, where I, I just spend some time looking through Explore for images that I think are interesting and make me wonder how they did it. Um, and then I kind of you know, copy and paste those and then look at all of them together and go, okay, I kind of get, I kind of get the idea of what I want and what, uh, you know, what might work, what might not. Um, RJ. Okay, thanks. So uh, getting back to what I was saying before, I just pasted in a mushroom that's smiling. It took me two seconds to make that. <laughs> I, I, I went to Dream AI 
Ai. I selected the sketch, um, the sketch style, yep. which basically looks like line drawing, sort of. I typed in the words smiling mushroom, and that's what I got in two seconds. And what I was going to say is what you can also do, like I said before, even, is you could uh, then copy that image, upload it into the... Um, the Dream AI tool as an upload image. Choose the image strength that you want, intense, yep. you know, for influence, and then you could say, "Make the mushroom crying," and it'll look just yep. like the same mushroom, except it'll be crying. Yep. And you have control of the background. And and what I also can say to do is, you can say, in the prompt. Uh, or you can do it with editing. You could edit out all of the leaves and things like that that you don't want there. And then, you know, this way you have more of a, a you know, just the mushroom itself. And yep. then you could do much more control in, you know, post-processing or uploading the reference image or so on. So that, that's just what I was going to suggest. Um, or see thanks, who's trying to do that. Yeah, that's a really quick, fast way to do it with a tool want, that allows you to upload an image. Uh, do you want to drop some of those into um, into the Learn and Do channel? And we'll look oh, at them yeah, a little I'll bit Oh, yeah, I'll put them in there later. Uh, uh, but okay. I, I just made this one right now. I mean, it just took yep. two seconds with a two-word yep. prompt, smiling mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> um, the trick uh, is awesome. to pick the right model, the, the right style, and the right tool to, to do it, I think. Uh, and I would have to say line art, I, you know, actually you can get some amazing, uh, like logo stuff with mid journey, um, uh, cartoony art or coloring, coloring page art, by, by the way, this one completely different than line art. Um, if you say coloring page for kids, you get a lot of cool, um, uh, actually, let me take this prompt coloring page for kids, uh, mushroom. Uh, and let me make sure, well, I guess I can just override chaos here. Uh, let's see what it does with that. Um, uh, conversely, if you want something, if you want something, you know, like a nice illustration or a nice photograph or something like that, Mid Journey is awesome. Um, I was going to say a different, uh, if you start with an image, a lot of times you can either do a, um, a blend or a style ref. Um, Uh, and that'll do useful things too. Maybe we don't have to cover that now. I, um, so now that we've covered, uh, let me show you the fun thing I like to do with, with mid journey. Um, you make a random, uh, so these prompts over here, this was adverbs actually. Uh, I was, uh, these were, uh, Gemini in this case, um, make some g generic kinds of, of prompts, uh, either describe a scene or describe a bunch of words or whatever. Um, the, the thing that I really like to do more than character reference uh, is use a style um, from uh, an interesting looking image. Uh, this one is actually pretty interesting. Use style. And then sometimes I use the same prompt or sometimes I use a different prompt. Uh, use prompt. Um, and then I've got chaos set really high, which is probably what I want. Actually, let's turn it low just to see what happens. Except I screwed up on that one. Um, and let me do that slower again and, and you'll see how I screwed up. Uh, I did, so this, this is the create. You can kind of do this from archive too. Um, I'm gonna say use style. Um, so that loads that picture, and then it was this prompt, right? Use prompt. Um, 
this one itself was created with a style ref. So when I said use prompt, it copied this style ref in because it's that's the whole prompt. So I need to delete that. Um, and then I can generate. Uh, let's do a different thing and use this as a character reference. You'll notice that character reference isn't in here yet, um, but there's a hack you can do. If you pick any of these, um, there's a little three icon thing here that's that turns on and off uh, character and style and image. Uh, image is when you want to use it for a blend. So uh, if you hold down the shift key, you can select uh, more than one of these. Uh, if you don't hold down the shift key, whichever one you select is the one that you ended up with. So I started off with use style and, and say I wanted to use this as a character reference. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, uh, right click, use style, and then change it to a character reference. And now I can say uh, that maybe that same one, I, I could actually borrow it if it's not too much of a scroll. I could just borrow that prompt from here, use prompt. Make sure to kill that that uh, other style ref or character ref, I guess. Um, so I did a complete like 90 degree turn there and went from character references and mushrooms to the fun thing to do with Mid journey, especially on the web, you can kind of do that same thing. Use use style use this something as a style ref. It's easier on the web. Um, uh, I'm having a lot more fun with style ref than character ref. Um, you get it's not always amazing, but it's often really good and sometimes amazing. You get some really cool stuff this way. So that's what I recommend to do with mid journey. Okay, so um, thanks for going with to that all with us, um, especially for the non-mid-journey folks. Um, maybe we'll switch to Jankifiers a little bit. Does that sound OK? Let me know if not. So these, these, are, these are great, even though they're from the back. I don't know why, but whatever. Um, and I've, oh, I didn't even put Chaos High on these. So with Chaos. 40, it would, these would look even cooler and a little crazier. Um, Jekka virus, sounds good. So um, the let's do a quick recap of Jenka virus. And thank you again so much, Danielle, for, for um, patiently playing along with us uh, last week uh, or last whatever it was. Um, um, so, uh, I was hoping to type a, a list here before the call, but I didn't, of course. So, so anyway, there's a thing called files. Files are local on your computer. Uh, sometimes they're documents. Uh, sometimes they're images, sometimes they're other things like spreadsheets. Um, so a certain kind of file is called a text file. And some text files can be HTML. So um, in text mode, they usually end in .txt. In HTML mode, they usually, I'm getting self-conscious. I think I could actually type as fast as I was, but OK. So um, and then uh, some H, or sorry, uh, HTML pages are also uh, HTML pages can be uh, loaded by a web browser as a web page. HTML pages can include JavaScript programming. A 
good LLM can write an HTML page with JavaScript that does some simple processing. Okay, so what this is supposed to be is, so this is a recap of kind of what we learned last week, um, except last week we did backwards. We started with this and we worked our way back up. Um, what we found out with Danielle is maybe it's easier if we kind of start with like the stuff on your computer is you have text files and if you if you change the name of it, um, it it's kind of an HTML file and then HTML files are a web page and then HTML files uh, can have a little bit of JavaScript that does something uh, something right. So this is the same description. Hopefully this was a lot faster and it went forwards instead of backwards from, from simple to complex rather than <laughs> complex to simple. Um, any questions, make sense, good to go. So let me do some quick show and tell um, with Vicky's actually. Uh, so Vicky's written about four of these, I think. Um, let's look at number fire real quick. Um, and Vicky's learned some lessons from my early experiments and she's like, the new text will be automatically added to your clipboard. Thanks, Pete. I didn't need to have a whole button and a whole like pop-up thing that says your text has been copied to the clipboard. You know, it's like just straight into the point. Um, so let's grab a random prompt here. Um, this could be any text, of course, and it could be off of ChatGPT instead of off of MidJourney. But um, so imagine we had some text like this: a tranquil forest at sunrise, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the deal that Vicky has with this uh, is that it changes random words into numbers. Hmm, that's cool. So let's click convert and see what see what happens. So A turned into seventy five. Uh, sunrise turned into 18. The sky is 96.25. Um, uh, I think, hey, hey, Vicky, what did what were you hoping to do with uh, numberifying? What what would you think? What did you think would happen? Um, just create it like a random prompt that would maybe keep some of the original, like if you use the whole yeah. prompt. It, will, it might keep some of those things, but like the rest of it, it's just going to be something random. So break it up. Um, it's not necessarily at sunrise anymore. And yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm going to try to be like Danielle here and use Dolly, if I can find it. Um, so let's take this prompt and I'll put it in the chat in case you want to play along. Uh, and actually, let me do, uh, so change random words into probably random numbers. If I do this a couple times, it's different every time. Um, so let's try this one too. Let me hit return on this first one. Um, put the second one in chat and then I'm, I'm always super, uh, yeah, I just want to take that one until it's done with that, which is totally fine. Hey, here's Dolly Styles. That's pretty cool. And it's got random ones. That's pretty cool. Um, so ChatGPT is so funny because it's like, well, he forgot to say Don. <laughs> Uh, ChatGPT doesn't know that I specifically wanted it turned into numbers. Um, so it's like, yeah, let's call it Don because the rest of it sounds enough like Don. That, so thanks, thanks ChatGPT for being a little too smart. Um, uh, so what it did is it actually fixed it. 
um, this is what we had. And, you know, we had something with numbers in it. So it put Don back into <laughs> um, yeah, it. Yeah. It janked its own janktified prompt. It, 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 it de janktified it. De -janked I, I think. it. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, dude, seriously. Uh, so let's try it with Mid Journey too. So Mid Journey doesn't try so hard to make your image. It, it tries actually really hard to. Um, it tries really hard to make a pretty image, but it doesn't care too much if if you got the description wrong. It's like, hey, yeah, I'll make that. Don't worry. Um, okay, so that's a simple uh, Jenkifier, uh, Daniel. Hey, Pete. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, so I was wondering if there's a way to prompt Dolly to say if there's any way Don't to make it so it. that it doesn't. It's the, yeah. It does <laughs> if it's a, do not modify this prompt in any way. Is there a way to prompt it to not modify the prompt you Let's know try. okay uh, you, you probably it... know better than me what oh. i was I gonna say know. can you put in quotation marks i'm i'm gonna even try a little bit harder than that and say <laughs> use this prompt verbatim um i think i think you can't that's part of it's partly a, it's like a soft guardrail it's it's a friendly guardrail instead of a it's a fluffy guardrail or something like that um because they run it through understanding and then generate it, um, it actually looks a lot different. That's cool. Maybe it worked. Thanks. I don't, uh, <laughs> don't know. It de-jankified it even harder, I think, is what happened. <laughs> uh, so I think the short answer is no, Danielle. I, I, and I'm, I'm pleased to know that I'm, you're going to experiment a bunch and, and find out for us. Uh, I have to say, uh, the, um, it's not quite ready for prime time yet, but the dollar fire, it, it did look like it did that. Um, I think that's the API key. Let me see if I can grab another API key real fast. Peter, have you looked into what um, the tokenization process would be doing to these kinds of prompts at all? Not at all. And that's a good question. Because I would expect it would be just throwing away a lot of stuff, you know, like you, you might think you're creating something that it's using. And, but if you, in general, things that it doesn't understand that usually just gives it like a default token or ignores it, I think. Because um, it's going to try to map these into words uh, that it already knows in its vocabulary, basically. I think they, they tend to have X amount of words in their vocabulary. I can't remember what the number is. But do you, um, do you mean, do you mean a, a not tankified prompt or something where we've changed some of where you've, the numbers? Yeah, where you've done what you've done, like an example there. I would say if you, well, what happens when you throw that in the tokenizer tool in, in, um, in um, uh, OpenAI's tokenizer tool? Remember that tokenizer tool you demoed for us yep. once? Uh, yep. Did you demo a junkified Talk, um, uh, no, we haven't. Actually. I was just wondering if you could demo uh, when you get a chance some day or time, um, uh, demo a, a Jankified prompt in the OpenAI tokenizer tool so we can see what yeah. it does with it. Um, doing a couple things at once. So I think, so this is, this is a, I call it a Jankifier. It actually, it's, well, so it takes a prompt and it sends it straight to Dolly. It doesn't doesn't use the ChatGPT interface. It's interesting that this one is almost the same as those. So I think Dolly might have a front end where it, I don't know. I, I thought this would be a little bit more janky. Sorry, Daniel. Uh, <laughs> because this is going straight to the API instead of uh, through ChatGPT. Um, let's, let's do that thing that, uh, I'm going to save this. Otherwise, I think it's not going to, I'm not ever going to have it again. Um, uh, 
so one of the the jankiest jankifiers is letterific um and i really like it it's really nice <laughs> i guess because i like janky stuff um let's uh grab a random prompt here create uh, create um this is a pretty good one probably uh so I'm going to delete this stuff. I actually didn't mean for this, when I wrote it, I didn't mean it to be quite as janky as it did, but it, it's actually more, more awesome because it's janky. So what this does is it puts a random letter around each letter in here. So here's the A, S, as, T, H, E, C, L, O, C, K. Um, and then if you do it more times, it randomizes again. So these are really janky which is pretty cool. So what happens if we try to tokenize that? Um, so an interesting thing to do, and we won't do it today probably, but um, so usually if you, uh, here's an example, this is better. Um, so I just clicked the show example text. This is, um, you know, built in text on the uh, tokenizer playground. Um, so usually what happens, uh, each word is a token, but some aren't, some are, some are part of, a, part of a word. So, and then this indiv could, could be individual, could be probably some other words. Um, uh, the LLM actually, uh, so this is, shows you what shows you where there are tokens. This actually shows you the token IDs. So each of those tokens turns into a number. So when you say many, uh, the LLM actually gets 8607. And when you say words, it gets 4339. So it got trained on these numbers instead of on words because these numbers are actually shorter in binary. <laughs> That's an interesting thing to say, but I think that's true. It's a good way to say it. Um, and then it actually thinks in these numbers, uh, which are mostly words, but not quite. So um, so then RJ's question was, if you throw out a bunch of not even words, what happens is it recognizes mostly letters as uh, a token. So, you know, it has token for UE and it has a token for SV, which I think is really weird, um, and a token for FN. But that's why this is so split up is because it can't find any words in here. So each of those turns into tokens. Um, it'd be interesting to try to turn some of these back into words by by seeing where else 2864 uh, or 939 happens. Um, like give it a, a bunch of words and then see where, you know, where, why it tokenizes SV together or QR. That one probably makes sense. That's probably partly from QR code. Let's try that real quick. Um, QR, I don't think we'll be able to find it again. But if I type QR, I mean, I could if we were, I type QR code, QR is a token because it's part of QR code. Um, the, uh, the reason it splits it up into tokens is because it's shorter than words, uh, even though that's, trust me that this number is shorter in the computer's brain than the whole word, it just is. Um, so it's, it's a way of, compressing the text into word size chunks instead of letters. And then that makes it be able to predict things better. Um, and they split the difference. They did a bunch of experiments going one way or the other. Should we make, uh, you know, should each syllable be a, a thing? Should we make each di diphthong be a thing? Um, and this is kind of splitting the difference between lots of words in its vocabulary and short, um, short, tokens. Um, uh, okay, so Jankifiers. 
Um, let's go back to Vicky's uh, number of fire. And if, if you were here last week, um, uh, watching Danielle and I do creating a Jenka fire on her computer, um, we saw it as a text file. And if I find a Jenka fire on the web like this, um, I can turn it back into a text file on my computer by saying download. Um, I'll use this up here. Uh, or save page as. So I can say save page as. Um, and because it's, I, I'm thinking of it in HTML mode, I'm going to make sure it says .html at the end. Um, and now the trick that I was using, and there's a couple of different ways to do this trick, but one of the tricks is convert it from HTML mode to text mode. It's really the same thing, but it helps the operating system know what how you want to think of it. So if the text file, I can double click on it and it'll turn into a text edit thing. Um, so this looks pretty similar to uh, what um, Danielle's Jankifier looked like uh, on her computer, her interleaver Jankifier. Um, the, the big differences will be in the script part here. And sometimes the script part ends up at the top and sometimes it ends up at the bottom. ChatGPT wrote this. Um, Vicky, you know, Vicky asked ChatGPT to write it, and then ChatGPT wrote it. And probably Vicky didn't muck, muck around with it much. So ChatGPT knows. Well, it turns out that you can put the script at the front, or the back, or in the middle. Probably it's usually at the front or the back. I've seen both. It knows how to put it in the right place so that it works, and that's all that you have to care about, kind of. Um, if you want to, uh, if you want to edit some of the text, you can go into the places where it looks like text and edit it. Like we said last week, uh, you can't break your computer by editing this. You can make it so that Jankifier won't work anymore, but, um, but you can actually edit these pretty safely. Uh, even screwing up, if you screw up this, nothing bad will happen. So um, now that we have it, uh, somehow I edited this. I didn't really want that. So let me open this again. <clears throat> Um, uh, Vicky copyrighted this, but she also says it's open source. Um, and she says it's licensed under the MIT license. The MIT license is legal boilerplate that open source people use. They use about 10 different ones um, in the main. And then there's like thousands of other ones. But it's better if everybody standardizes and uses the same ones because <laughs> You learn how you learn what this means, and then you go, "Oh, I get it. MIT license. Um, it has, you know, I can do these things with it." So Vicky wrote this with ChatGPT, or Chat Vicky had ChatGPT wrote it, and then she decided to copyright it for herself, which is great. She should do that. Um, but then she said, uh, "Under these terms, uh, here's the stuff that you can do." So I've obtained a copy of it. Um, and the associated documentation, which is in line. That's great. So deal in software means I could sell this. Um, I could modify it. I can, so use, copy, modify, merge, publish, distribute, sublicense, and or sell. So these are all the things I can do with it. Um, and anybody else I sell it to or, or distribute it to or uh, modify it, they can do the same thing as long as this copyright notice has to be included. So I could actually sell this, but I have to make sure that I include um, Vicky's copyright notice here, um, which maybe it's easier to read here. Um, I have to include this copyright notice and probably also at least a link to the MIT license. Um, and that's important because Vicky probably wants you to make changes, but she, when you make changes, it would be really nice if other people could make changes too. So. Um, uh, we'll get into some fine details about selling or not selling and stuff like that. Um, RJ. I was wondering, so when you're having the AI make code for you, how do you know that it didn't give you code that was already copyrighted? Uh, that's a great question. 
And the shorter answer is you don't. <laughs> um, the slightly longer answer is that you should trust OpenAI or Microsoft or whoever um, to not do that. Um, if I were a company and I had a lot of legal, um, if I'm a company, and this happens actually with any, any code that you write, um, because uh, your programmers, whether you like it or not, uh, to write whatever code they wrote, even if they say they wrote the whole thing, probably they went off to Stack Overflow and copy and pasted some lines from the Stack Overflow, some question to an answer about how to do a particular thing. So, so one of the things you do is you probably have uh, liability insurance. Another thing you do is you have a bunch of tools that uh, look at your source code and look for plagiarism. So you have a plagiarism detector run over everything. Um, uh, even code that your programmers swear that they wrote because you can't really trust that they didn't, you know, accidentally get inspired by some Stack Overflow post or whatever, um, or copy and pasting from some open source code that had some license, which you may or not, may not be able to distribute, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't know. That's the short answer. The a, a slightly longer answer maybe that's relevant to Jenkafires is. Uh, this, like all the guts here, it's so basic that you, it doesn't really make sense to copyright this. Copywriting this chunk of code here, which does the random stuff and with a word, you know, um, this has been written a hundred million times by different people and different bots and stuff like that. So this is kind of like saying, you know, Hey, I'm going to copyright this sentence, or I'm going to copyright, you know, this part of this sentence, and I'm I'm pretty sure decide whether to replace is going to be a fair use thing. Um, so a lot of this whole thing is kind of fair use. I don't know. I don't know if that answers your question. Um, kind of similar. I, I I can answer that in a different way, which is if I go to Mid Journey and scroll through probably a day's worth of. Uh, generated stuff. Midjourney likes to give me, or I, between Midjourney and I, the way I prompt it, um, I get Captain America sometimes, I get Batman sometimes, I get Superman sometimes. Um, uh, the weird ones are when I get a Batman and Superman uh, clone thing. I thought this would work better because I've, oh, here's here's a good one. Batman did a selfie in kind of a little bit of an Iron Man costume there. Is that awesome or what? So in, in some sense, there's a couple things going on here. One of them is uh, whether or not they had, so clearly they've looked at copyrighted images to be able to create this image. Um, they're going to argue that that's fair use. Um, and I think there's a good chance they'll win. We'll see. Um, I think actually what's going to happen is a bunch of bigwig lawyers and big companies will make it so that, um, so Disney or DC or whoever, um, somebody's going to get some royalty payments from OpenAI for having looked at, you know, all the, all the movies and all the cartoons and whatever. But that is not really a copyright violation. Looking at stuff isn't a copyright violation taking something that's copyrighted and publishing is a copyright violation. So that's why that whole thing is, it's a debate whether it's fair use or not. And the winner is going to be lawyers and big companies and the losers are going to be little artists. Um, and I don't know if it's really a loss. If I'm a little artist, I actually want the global bot system to have pictures that you know are inspired by me. I do not want it to make copies of my images. Um, I'm pretty sure this isn't a copy of an image, right? Um, so anyway, uh, so now the next step in the, the next pick in the Python is what can Pete do with this image? Um, I'm gonna look at this image and say, you know, if I publish this, I'm in trouble with whoever owns Batman. <laughs> and it's not really a defense that, hey, OpenAI made this for me, and so it must be free of copyright restriction. That's bullshit. Um, I would be the publisher in that case, and publishing is where a copyright violation happens. So there's no way I'm going to publish this. And now having said that, I wonder if I'm going to scrub this off the recording. 
<laughs> I think I probably will. Um, I can share it with you all. That's kind of a, I'm not, you know, I'm, that's kind of a fair use thing. I think that's probably fair. Um, but anyway. So, so YouTube, YouTube might see this. Maybe YouTube will see this and and uh, and delete your yeah. video for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, it could be. They, I, they won't. But um, but if this was an animation of Batman doing something similar to something in one of the movies, it could be. Um, so long story short, uh, I don't know. Thanks for the question. Useful question, interesting discussion. Uh, thankfully, Vicky made this open source. So we can do anything that's specified here. And remember one of the things, uh, you can do pretty much whatever you want. Um, subject to the following conditions, uh, the copyright notice and the permission notice must be included in all substantial portions of the software. So when you give away a modified version of this or sell it, um, you have to give away this this notice and her name. Uh, and probably most crucially for Vicky, a big part of this is actually this disclaimer. Um, you know, if you operate heavy machinery while reading this code and you get into a terrible accident and kill a bunch of people, um, and you might be tempted to go back to Vicky and say, hey, Vicky, <laughs> I think you share a liability for killing all these people because I was reading your code. I can't believe, you know, I couldn't believe this part of it and that caused the accident. Um, right in here is like, dude, I have no liability for whatever you do with this. This is not, you know, whatever you were doing with it is your fault, not mine. So this is a big protection for Vicky as people go to use her code. And the history of licenses, uh, open source licenses is long and fraught. And so they, you know, it, it kind of narrows down to the things that you really need. And this is something that you actually really need. Okay. so. What I was going to do here, if you remember, we took a thing that's on a website, um, uh, on the AI 101 website as it happens, but maybe it's off of Vicky's website. Um, if it says open source like that, um, if I can find it again, word to number, yeah, number fire. Uh, we did file save as, or probably I can do, yeah, I can do it here too. And then we switched the ending from HTML to text. And then we loaded it in our text editor. And I was thinking, um, uh, uh, maybe I want to change your code a little bit. I, I don't know that we'll do that. But just to show that um, maybe I think this whole thing would be improved by saying Peter Kaminsky is awesome, Jenkins fires. Um, if I save this as a text file, I did command S to do that. And right now I'm looking for my finder window. So now this has got that new version with the, the word awesome that I put in. Let's change it back to HTML mode and then load it. If I double click this, you'll notice it looks the same in the web browser. Let me try to get it into its own window. It looks the same. Uh, except it does have this um, in, in amazing addition to the texture. Mm -hmm. um, so this is my version. And I could have said random words. Maybe I want to change this into, you know, from random into every other word or change from numbers to letters or something, I don't know, or into the word um, jank or something, right? Um, so this is like a, a modified version of it. Uh, if I wanted to put this up on the web someplace, I would leave, I, I bound by the MIT license to leave this, but I could add something that says, um, you know, modifications by Peter Kaminsky, something like that. Modifications copyright by Peter Kaminsky. Um, and a big thing to note here is that, let's, let's try it. Um, if I take the same text, I guess I'll take this text. If I paste it here and paste it here um, and do convert on this one and convert on this one, this one still works. Um, and it's on my computer. It's not on a website someplace. So a big important thing about Jankifiers is you can get ChatGPT to write a Jankifier for you. And if it does what you want, you don't have to put it anywhere. You don't have to put it on the web. You don't have to share it. Um, and it will still run. All you do to run it uh, is 
dang, I'm getting tired of Batman here. Um, all you do to run it is make sure it says HTML and you load it in your web browser and it's running, it's running code. So um, that wasn't quite what I was, well, actually I, I did want to cover all of that. So it, it's useful that we covered it. I'm not sure that that would have been quite the order I would have covered it, but a couple of things we learned today. Um, uh, Jenkifiers are, Jenkifiers are files and they can have .txt and, and HTML and you can switch just by renaming them. Um, and then you can load it as a web browser. You don't have to save it to a server or anything like that. You don't have to share it with anybody else. Um, and uh, like we saw, we, like we've been seeing, a good LLM will write a Jenkifier web page for you. So there you are go. We, are we any closer to figuring out what it is that an image model is doing with a Jenkify prompt and why um, it's sort of doing what it's doing? Uh, no, I would say no. Uh, and, and for me, I don't care too much, actually. Um, and maybe that's, I don't know, maybe that's useful, maybe it's not. Uh, it's, it's an interesting question, definitely, RJ. I, I like, you know, I would like to understand it better. But what I know <laughs> uh, is that, um, and the jankier, the better, kind of. Uh, if I take a, um, actually, let's just use this. Um, if we take this and really jank it up, um, interleaver is pretty good. SFRS is pretty good. Um, uh, Vicky's got a pretty good one, ad adjective adder. So this one is easy to guess what it does, um, what what the image prompt or what the image thing will do. I lost my uh, I lost my awesome prompt here. Uh, let's do let's find a real prompt. And there, I just scrolled past some great uh, letter, letterific, font, uh, letterific ones. But um, uh, somehow I've broken my copy paste. I think maybe I broke Chrome. <laughs> Uh, command V and Command C aren't quite doing what I would expect. Um, I think it's probably Chrome. Um, yeah, I don't know why I put that big box in there. I ain't gonna go in and fix that. <laughs> What's that? I don't know why I put that big box in there because it looks like that's where you're supposed to put your text. But... Oh, is that what I'm trying to do? It's just operator error? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's what it was. Yeah, that's the output box. <laughs> it's because I'm presenting and you get stupid when you're presenting. You know, it's like, what am I doing wrong? Oh, I don't I, know. I just I'm just going to keep doing the same thing over and over. Um, uh, yeah, Vicky and I can, can swap HTML stuff. If you made that a div instead of a text area, you know, you'd be golden. Um, mm. But then the div doesn't look as obvious as an output thing. I'm still kind of playing around with, you know, what, anyway. Um, so uh, this adds random uh, outlandish uh, adjectives. And so uh, you know what's going to happen here. Um, we're going to get some, you know, like cool stuff. And then um, we don't have to generate any. This is a letterific prompt. Um, this probably says the something. I don't know. I don't even know what this says. To the first order, I don't really care what the image generator thought of this. All I know is if I gave it, if I give it garbage, uh, gibberish, um, it creates really cool images, and that's all I really care about. Um, partly the difference between these four. So this this is all the same prompt, right? And maybe that's not the best example of it. This is a this is from the same prompt. These all actually have swimming pools. These are more different. So let's continue to this one. Another thing I've got going on here is I've got chaos turned up way high. Um, but let's try generating an image without that chaos, and we'll get still four images that are very different from each other. Um, 
Uh, here's the uh, adjective adder one. Now I wish I used turbo. <clears throat> I think so, and, and we can kind of guess a little bit what's going on. We've we've seen in these sessions that um, both ChatGPT and Midjourney pretty much and Dolly will kind of reconstruct. They don't care too much what the exact language is. They get an impression of it. Um, so kind of like an LLM works, you know, it if you misspell something or put words in the wrong order or something like that, it understands what you mean. And what it's doing is it's like, huh, what feels, you know, what, uh, what feels like a good completion for this jumble of text? It doesn't really understand the text and it doesn't really need to parse it perfectly. It's just getting the general feel of it. So if you jumble up the text a little bit, um, it still works. Um, and we saw ChatGP likes to fix it even. Um, uh, so a little bit of jumbling doesn't confuse it too much. Um, uh, the adjective adder, the way Vicky wrote this, it, it, I should have done chaos. Uh, let's try chaos zero here. Um, adding things like astonishing and enigmatic and delightful and stuff like that, um, especially if you continue to repeat it, it sweetens the image. It makes it you know fancier. Um, she has that cool brain with extra decorations on it and stuff like that. That's what you get. Um, and then if you give it complete gibberish, it's kind of interesting to think what it's doing with this because Midjourney must have, uh, you know, must have some language parsing, but it also is totally happy to have just a random jumble of letters and it does something magical with it and whatever. Um, I, I don't, I'm not even sure that they know or really care what goes on with it as long as the images are pretty and that's kind of their, their brand. So this again, this is without chaos and these are very, you know, very different images uh, from this prompt. So my guess kind of is um, it's got a free association mode. Uh, I know if you accidentally get words in here, it will glom onto the words and, you know, if, if one of these words was a uh, uh, bird or something like that, you'd probably definitely get birds at least a little bit. But if there's no words, it doesn't have anything to climb onto, so it free associates. Um, I'm starting to see, I, I used to see this with five two, and I didn't see it with six as much. There are some, just some stock images that I see over and over and over when I'm doing these random prompts. Um, uh, so, um, I, I'm pretty sure they've got a bunch of artists who curated, maybe not a bunch, they've got artists who curated a bunch of like stock images. For 5.2, it was the fl floating city, uh, uh, island in the sky th kind of thing, um, or a woman with lots of goldfish floating around her or uh, like crazy hair or something like that. I'm seeing a lot less repetition now in six, but I definitely see some of the same images over and over and over. Um, in different kinds, you know, different ways. Um, six is also a lot better about like if you if you do blends of prompts or something like that. It's you can tell it's generating a completely novel image that nobody's ever seen before. Um, but with these, it's hard to tell whether I'm you know. So this is actually probably a pretty good example. Um, I see a lot of, I guess, a difference between five two and six. In five two, it would it the the image was were the the um, the halut, the the you know, oh great! The user gave me a random prompt, and I'm just going to hallucinate one of my stock images. The stock images were very similar to each other. Um, maybe not like pixel for pixel, but you know, it would it was always the same kind of general look and feel of the floating you know village in the sky with the dirt underneath and all that. They they all you could tell that they were very similar. I, I get a fair number of what I would describe as monster coming out of you know the fog or the waves or something like that, um, and it looks super scary and stuff. But they all look different. They're different kinds of monsters. Um, they have different light and dark. They you know some of them are on fire. Some of them are you know some of them have uh, needle teeth. Some of them have big sharp teeth. Um, they all look um, unpleasantly mean and things like that. So I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, some of the things that you tap into are, are fairly stock, but 
the way they complexify the stocks, the stock images now is, is very dramatic. And so this is not necessarily the same kind of monster that anyone else has ever seen. Whereas in 5.2, you would get this, you know, the same one over and over. So an interesting thing when you do search on these random images, yeah, that one pretty much the same. Um, I've gotten, I've gotten um, uh, a lot of the random prompt images I get, and none of these are probably very good. Yeah, this is a great example. This is mind blowing here, where this is um, this is an image I got with a random prompt, and I'm searching for similar images. These are similar images. So the stock thing here is obviously mean looking monster, dark color, you know, um, bigger than life coming out of the fog thing. Um, so I'm guessing that there's some kind of stock image, which is also cute fairy toadstools in the forest, uh, you know, trees, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I, th I think what's happening in this particular case is each of, especially because I guess I didn't use chaos here. Um, let me do, go back to create and you can see them all together. Um, each of these is probably a fairly stock idea with a lot of sweetening and changing it and stuff like that to get all kinds of different monsters. And each one of them is like that. But if I search for any one of these, it's using, you know, it, it gets these these ones I don't find because it gets covered up by that one, if that makes sense. So if I do a reverse search on this, it's going to also be the same thing. And um, and on the woman too. So maybe we know, maybe if, if you generate tens of thousands of images, maybe you do actually know more about what's going on in the background than, than you think. Okay. Um, thanks so much for, for being with me. Um, hopefully some of that was useful and interesting. Um, uh, yeah, this was a lot of fun. It was nice to see the demos for the models, you know, and trying things out. And this is really good. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Um, uh, we should set up uh, some way of like, I, I guess what I'll do is I'll, I'll start a thread or something in the channel saying, um, you know, here's some ideas that we could talk about next week. Uh, you know, what else should we do or sharpen that up or, or something like that. So we can kind of think about, think together rather than just be going, okay, today we're going to, blah. Um, I liked, even though we didn't get to play with Janko Fires very much, and, and I especially missed having written one um, again. Um, I did want to cover the idea of open source there kind of, and that you can take yours and run it locally. You can take somebody else's like mine or Vicky's, or maybe some of you, if you have open source Jankifiers, you can modify them and do cool things. We just modified the text, but you could actually, I could go into, into Vicky's and see if I could change the number into, you know, the word, um, awesome or something like that. Um, or you know, do some other kind of interesting take on hers instead of having to start completely from scratch. But of course you can start from scratch too. Cool. Have you, have you ever have you ever asked an LLM what it, it thinks of the prompt? You know, like how does it interpret a Jankify prompt? I was just wondering if it if let's let's try it really quick. Yeah, because um, I'm wondering like um, Chat GPT supposedly now is good at writing prompts for image generators because apparently it might have been trained to do that. I'm not sure, but it would be I, interesting to see what a, an L Chat GDP says about a Jankify prompt and wh how much of it it thinks it's actually going to get used, how much it's going to get thrown away, and what it's going to be doing with the rest of it that it keeps. And also, it would well. It probably wouldn't know this, but part of what the image model might be doing is related to the tags that the images had uh, that it was 
you know, so the images that the model was trained on had tags, and somehow that is a key thing, I think, that the the image model does to relate words about an image and the image that it was trained on. So that might be a part of what's going on too, perhaps. Um, it could be. And, and, and some of what you said reminds me of a, a news, news thing that I've been meaning to share and haven't gotten around to. Um, there's a, somebody was playing around um, uh, prompts take up lots, well, well, prompts take up tokens, right? And the more tokens you take, the more it costs. Basically, tokens are very cheap to use, but if you can use fewer, it's better. Um, somebody did, researchers have done a fair amount of work with a really long prompt. It turns out there's a lot of like extra words in it. So they've got a method of giving the prompt to a cheap local uh, or a local, a, a, a local and not very smart um, LLM, um, you know, Llama 7B or something like that. Um, you give it to an LLM and, you, and they've got a specific prompt that says, uh, remove any words that, that aren't useful, don't, don't mean anything, you know, change this prompt to be smaller, remove any words that don't have meaning. Um, and they've gotten that prompt, the prompt to do that, written pretty well. Um, and they they find that they can they can shrink prompts they they can suck out the the useless stuff that LLM doesn't doesn't care about they can do that for free locally and then they can send the the um, shortened prompt I wanted to say Jankified but it's sh just shortened they can send the shortened prompt to, to the expense of LLM so there definitely is a lot of redundancy that you can suck out of it um, and an LLM can help you do that I'll try to dig up the article and post it to news um, so. So it didn't, it didn't really care too much that this was a little bit jankified. This is the adjectifier. Um, it did notice the extra words, the layers of intrigue and charm. And then if I asked it specifically, is it English? And it's like, yeah, I don't know, dude, it's not really. Um, so let's try the same thing with uh, using uh, this text. And if we give it to uh, letterific. Another thing that we saw last week was uh, the reverse text thing. That's the one we did with, um, with Danielle. The reverse text thing, um, ChatGPT actually recognizes the reverse text and fixes it for you. If, you know, in, unless you like tell it, dude, please do not fix it. I don't know what you're trying to do, man. You're trying to understand me, I get it, but I, I wanted it reversed. Um, Thinks you're like a severe dyslexic or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, no. Hey, I, I'm not. No offense to anyone who's dyslexic. I thought special education, but so. Well, it's so now we know. You know, ChatGPT is. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, just don't I'm sorry. I wouldn't put it in. So, uh, so I guess what we have found um, is if if I, if I say use it as a prompt for Dolly, it's going to say use it as a or actually. Uh, Um, it balks. It doesn't like doing that. Um, I think I can bully it into doing it. <laughs> I'm sure this is coincidence, but there's an error. I am sure, literally. Uh, at least about 99%. So I think it's it's going to be an interesting image. Uh, we'll look at the prompt, and and it will have just invented something. I think. Um, oh my gosh! It That's worked. so cool. <laughs> you said enter the text verbatim. Okay, I'm writing that down. <laughs> Sorry. 
Well, I've, I think I've, I think it I've tried neat. it a couple different ways and you can bully it long enough. I, I, I think I've had to bully it. Um, is this really, I, I'm, I, I'm curious you know, to see if it's actually. Verbatim. I've noticed that ChatGPT is super lazy lately. Yeah. It, it, yes, it has been. I've had to um, say like, you search the internet. That's what I'm paying you to do. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm like, you know. Jim and I had this thing today. Uh, uh, speaking of cheeky LLMs, I would, I would say generate, you know, uh, give me three random adverbs um, or jumbled, you know, uh, make a sentence with the first three letters jumbled, you know, or something like that. And it would, mm -hmm. it would do, make three. And then I would say, now, do you want to do some? And I'm like, dude, <laughs> what? No, <laughs> not what no. I'm paying for, man. <laughs> That's so funny. Sorry, I'll mute myself now. Sorry. No, uh, so I should get going. It's time to walk the dog. Um, thanks for the question, RJ. It'll be interesting uh, to keep playing with. Yeah, you have me curious now. I'm really trying to understand what it is that's causing these images to get created, and if there's any. If, if it's really related to what's being the garbage that's being put in or whether it's maybe some default um, image generations uh, strategy that that the LLM, the image model generators designed into the system to create an interesting image, even though it gets a ridiculous prompt, it basically probably maybe ignores the prompt and, and goes into some default mode where it it creates wild and crazy images and totally ignores the prompt altogether. Yeah, that's that's definitely uh, mid mid journey. Um, it it it's got a you know random generation mode that it goes into, um, and the the six one is a lot better than the five point two one. But you would have you would have no way of knowing that though. You have no no way of knowing whether what you're seeing is a result of your prompt or whether your prompt is being totally ignored because it, it's it, it's sort of just like Chachi PT was just now. It says that prompt is like garbage. Give me something that I can you know make into a prompt. It, I, so maybe that's it. what the, the image model's doing. It's saying that prompt is garbage. I'm gonna ignore it. I'm gonna go into some other mode that, that they pre-program me to do to create a wild image so that people keep using the image model. Um, I I've seen enough. I, it it took me a couple months to see it enough, but I've seen enough um, of the same type of image that I can tell that it's the same type of image. You know, it's it's gotten into a mode. There's other things like I've never seen this before. This this uh, this thing. Um, I'll try to share some of that. And so you're um, seeing patterns with certain kinds of garbled in the, or prompts yeah or... there's there's definitely um and it would take probably scrolling through thousands of images <laughs> to find some um but there's there's definitely a few and and they've gotten down to in five two they were almost the same images but like in this one um uh it's it's a very general it's it's a lot more general than it was. These are actually aren't very general looking. They're all pretty much. This. I mean, well, although actually these are different. <clears throat> so um, Mid Journey thinks these are all similar because they come from this, the same kind of um, um, fixed. You know, I okay pull out of our pull pull our library of you know a uh, hundred different kinds of random images and then take that random idea and, and make it different, right? Do different things with it. Danielle? I was going to ask if you could put that image that you just made on ChatGPT, the one where you told it to um, yes. follow prompt verbatim, if you could share that so that and maybe put the prompt up just to confuse everybody on um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, confuse so, everybody <laughs> so show and tell I mean, or learn and do i don't know i mean if you could well you can share it on both because you could just like copy yeah, it you're totally right but i i think it'd be funny if like if you just share the prompt and like not tell them well i don't know it'd be fun I, I, well, it, well I, as, i'm just being you, a brat but, but. as you probably know <laughs> um people certainly see me you know, I know. they won't be surprised by that prompt but I, that, I don't that, think 
turned out so rad and I can't wait to try that. So it would be interesting actually to, to yeah, to bully it with that same prompt and see what, um, uh, let me try Like you can see, I like how you could see the, the ocean scene of that one famous um, Japanese painting yeah. Yeah. in there. That's so cool. Uh, I can't think of the name of it. I know I should know that, but. The wave off of Kanagawa. Okay. Well, this is what I think it is. Like, like, why you gotta be a show off, Pete? Like, <laughs> well, you know, so the, the, uh, uh, I, so actually, you Google it. I, Ken, I have a, Kanagawa. Uh, Kanagawa. Kanagawa, whatever. Okay, so you correct um, me again. <laughs> the, the show off thing here. And now I feel bad because I'm showing off a little bit. And I'm okay. sure everybody knows this. This is actually a picture so. of Mount Fuji. Oh, yeah, in the background. I did take art, too. I, I took yeah, so there you go. See, I uh, Hokusai, I, I, I can't say his name very well. But he has a, a, a series of 54 or something images of uh, Fuji. So this is actually mm -hmm. an image of Fuji. It's one in the mm -hmm. series. So, But would, would you consider that the because... focal point? Would you consider that the focal well, point, even though in, it's so small? You know, like in a Japanese Zen kind of way, yeah. I I actually take photographs like that. <laughs> yeah. But... So I I totally get the vibe. Not that I'm anywhere near his level of artistry, but. Um... That's rad, though. But that is so. I can't wait to try that though. With the, and you use which Jenga fire did you use with that again? You use the uh... Literary fire. Literary fire. Which is awesome. And the funny thing is, you could actually write a de-jankifier for it. Some some jankifiers, like, you can't... Are like, you going to post it? Wait, are you going to post it just like that and say, here's the prompt I used? And just, like, here's well, my prompt. I, don't, <laughs> I, I do so this funny. all the time. This is pretty standard for me to do. But, like, um, no, you don't. Like that? Here's my yeah. prompt? Yeah. I don't even put my... This is my prompt. Um, oh. Uh, okay. Okay. No, I have to. And oh my gosh, I could screw up the prompt by putting <laughs> adding that. <laughs> it would make it so different. Um, I guess maybe I do. I do say prompt here a lot. The oh my, you didn't use yeah, you used Dali. Oh, you're right. See, you I, used Dali, I never yeah. use. Uh, See. Okay, Dolly. So I want this not to be bold. Yeah, you yeah you do share your do your mid journey prompts all the time, but like yeah, oh <laughs> people are gonna see it's gonna be funny because they're not gonna know that you use your jankifier to do that, and yeah, they're not gonna true. know that. So that's it's why true. okay, so that's why it's gonna be funny for for. I guess sometimes I, I will often explain that it's yeah a jankified. Yep. Here's here's the the pre jankified version of it. I do that. I try to share like the making of. Just I don't know why I'm so entertained by that. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's thanks for the little your, things. <laughs> thanks for the suggestion. I the, I you're totally right. That's that's a thing to uh, post. Anyway, sorry. Folks, it's been fun. Um, it will probably, next one will probably be late, like the last half of next week. We'll see, though. Depends on the eclipse weather. Oh, if we're all still here. And if we're all still here, yeah. Oh, the 8th is the eclipse, right? Yeah. Oh. And if the, but... the um, cicadas don't come out, right? <laughs> You're an idiot. Cic yeah. cic cicada Ganon. Cicada Ganon, what's it called? Yeah. <laughs> um, I just tried to put the Jankified prompt in Mid Journey. Yeah. Did you? Uh, did I miss it? Did you do that? I did not. Mid Journey won't it... do it. No. Really? Banned no. prompt detected. Oh. Sorry, our AI moderator thinks this prompt is probably against our community standards. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to appeal? How is something against mid? I mean, when and it's accepted by Dolly, but not mid journey. I. Mm, that's crazy. I mean, I'm not sorry. I'm not, saying, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying you're lying, Claire. I'm just saying that, like, that's crazy. Now Pete's going to oh, go look, yeah. huh? No. I, I had <laughs> to. Yeah. I had yeah, to. So why aren't you sharing your screen? Um, let me do it again. I'll share my screen. The, this the, one was. That Marissa joined away. Through the Discord. Let me try it through the not Discord. Oh, it's, it's the same thing on, on the web. Yeah. 
Is it doing it really? So I have to say, I there was um, one of the kinds yeah. of things I was doing was random words. Uh, <laughs> so here you go. Ooh, the dogs are getting mad. Did they tell you you couldn't do oh, it? Oh, it says not allowed. Um, I don't see the button here on the web on Discord. I think if you click the button, it, oh, Claire, it send the developers. <gasps> it, it would actually, you know, they would. It says. It. Um, yeah, you can it you can do an automatic appeal. Um, well, actually, maybe this this doesn't say that, does it? Is that what it? Let me try it on on uh, Discord real quick. I'd love to know what language that's hate speech in. <laughs> uh, maybe you don't. I Ask don't ChatGPT. <laughs> well, no, because obviously ChatGPT didn't catch it. You know, you if it, I'm, I guess we're just having hey. an open communicate talk right now because I don't know. Everyone's just chatting, right? I mean, yes. Because yeah, usually ChatGPT would like not be the one that would be like not allow you to. You know what I mean? It'll say, "Oh no, yeah. you said you said poo." Yeah, the guardrails are. Oh, this is even better. I keep asking it, so Moderation. I'm blocked for four minutes. <clears throat> oh, thanks, Danielle. <laughs> oh no, 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 blame Claire. I'm just kidding. <laughs> thanks, Claire. <laughs> just kidding. I should know better. I, I, you I know. throw Claire under the bus. <laughs> I'm I sorry. have two accounts on Mid Journey, so uh, I'm safe. She's like, mm. she's like, sir. <laughs> um, I in the olden days, I was trying. What I was trying to do was in the olden days, I would get that sometimes for the same reason, some you know random string, and there was a thing that says click if you think this is an error, and we'll automatically review it or something like that. So it does a a better uh, guardrail thing. That's crazy. Maybe it, maybe they don't have that anymore. I don't know. But like it's just a bunch of jumbled up letters. It's confusing their LLM. So the LLM is like, I don't like it. I I had uh, I I I found a five thousand word like five thousand words from the Oxford Dictionary or something like that, and I used that in a in a previous version of a it was a Python script, not a Jenkinsfire. But mm -hmm. um, but every once in a while I'd say you know pick 16 words out of this or something like that. And there were a few words in there that it, there weren't any swear words, but there were like things that were like, yeah, that's probably not a word that, you know, I, I get why they bounced that one. So All right. there you go. Thanks, Pete. And I'm thanks all. Yeah. Thanks I'm, all. Thank, thank you. Everyone. Sorry, I got you banned. It's fine. <laughs> thank, thank God it's only four minutes. He'll be walking the dogs. <laughs> Yeah. You can use my backup <laughs> account if you need. <laughs> I'll let you know, Claire. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Cheers, guys. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.